sinking fast My race is nearly run Oh, come angel man Come in That's how it came to be known as one of the great American horror films. Now, that's a debate some would have, but I won't. I ain't got time. Now, how the hell did you get ahead of me? You silly critters make me laugh. Anyways, where was I? Oh, that's right. Five college kids taken off across Texas in the middle of a long, hot summer, and they stumble across a house. Oh, much like that one right over there. Let's go see who's inside. Maybe they can help me get my truck that's stuck in the mud. Now, of course, I ain't never seen the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. A little too scary for my taste. But from what I read on the Wikipedia article, it sure sounds like a hoot and a holler. Now, one second, friends. I do have to knock on this here door and see if a fellow Christian would lend a helping hand. Now, the South gets a bad rap for being a region full of gun-toting bumpkins and mouth-breathing nincompoops. But as a dad in the wool southern man myself, I must offer as polite a disagreement as I possibly can. Oh, I think I hear the lady of the house coming now. Now, normally I would respect a property owner's God-given right to protect themselves. Having said that, this unfortunate looking woman spooked me. Quiet, it's a damn gut shot, it'll heal. Anyways, I do hope to one day see the Texas Chainsaw Massacre because I hear nothing but positive stuff about it. But if you'll forgive me, my day has taken an unexpected turn. This is Neurodivergent Texan Podcast Now. Let me turn it down. Your one-stop mystery meat shop of gore, wherein your two slack-jawed local yokels, Michael Long Pig Benton and Philip, the other, other, other white meat, Chadburn, guide you through our collection of video nasties, sci-fi flicks, and slasher movie classics. From the blood-soaked shores of Crystal Lake to the even more blood-spattered bedrooms of Elm Street, this podcast leaves no factoids unmurdered. I'm Michael. I'm Philip. I'm, uh... <sighs> What was it? The other, other white mate? You're the other, other, other white mate. What if I was the other beyond me? That sounds you, scary. You could be, yeah, you know. I mean, that does sound scary. That does sound scary. They're making us eat veggies that are made in a, like a, like a, like, like, like a lab, yeah. You know, where they made COVID, no less. <laughs> Just Probably. kidding. All right, oh, look. Down and they, they put in COVIDs in their burgers. For the Halloween special this year, we're discussing the 1974 down-home good old boy slash -ick. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But first, remember to like and subscribe uh, so you don't miss out on our, uh, our horror parodies, much like the one we opened up with this week, and all of our deep dive reviews that we do on YouTube and anywhere you get your podcasts. Uh, also, this week on the Patreon, uh, Movie Podcast Now Plus, we're continuing, I guess, wrapping up our favorite Halloween music of the month with a deep dive discussion on the spookiest music stories that are actually true. For example, did Keith Richards actually snort his father's ashes? The answer is yes, but we have way more we'll explain on that while also playing 
the classic fucking horror movie stuff. We're going to play the Monster Mash. We're not going to be dickbags about it and be like, um, actually, the Monster Mash is a song about the Monster Mash, but it's not the fucking Monster Mash. We're not doing any of that. We're going to straight ahead play some good fucking classic Halloween music. You can play it at a party, okay? Um, but all of that's happening over on patreon.com forward slash PMTM, only $3 a month, and you get so much for it. Now, my co-host, who's hopefully not a spooky co-ghost, let me explain. I can hear him, but I can't see him right now, okay, because his soul has been trapped in Zoom. Well, to be scary, I'm a specter, a Phil specter. Oh, Eve, that's the scariest of all. Yeah, that's like the hair. <laughs> Not just the hair. I would also add the murdering of his wife. Uh, yes, <laughs> that would probably be scarier. That's a, yeah. What's scarier, the hair or him murdering his wife? Probably the oh, hair. No. no, I think you're right. I think it's the hair. Yeah, it was the hair. It was the hair. It was the hair. Phil, how the heck you doing on Halloween month? Tomorrow's Halloween, dude. Tomorrow's Halloween. I am ready for Hall- uh, Halloween. Why are we cursing? We're on flipping YouTube, and over here, I'm I'm flipping cursing and saying H-O-Ween, I-H-A, double hockey stick, O-Ween. Halloween, yeah. Deck the Halloween. Why isn't it Halloween? I guess that's how you could probably say it, but we don't say that here on the POD, which is uh, short for podcast. Uh, my brother reached out to me and he was like, he was like, why do you call it the POD? That makes me think of the, the Christian rock band, POD. And I was like, yeah, I know. We're just messing. Yeah, we're, we're, we're just messing. We're messing guys. Hey, call me Deborah because I'm just messing. Yep. That's and my I'm humor. The one that drinks a lot and has big boobs. You've got big old boobs, Phil. Yeah, <laughs> Megan Mullally. Who was Megan Mullally? She was the chick in Will and Grace that was talk like this and drank all the time. Is that Megan Mullally? Yeah, she's also married to Nick Offerman. Mm-hmm. Who's Nick Offerman? Uh, a cool guy. I haven't paid attention to anything for the past 15 years. <laughs> he was Ron Swanson Dinners in Parks and Rec. He was Ron Swanson Dinners in Parks and Rec. He was also one half of my favorite gay couple in um, The Last of Us. Did you see that? Yeah, I did. Oh, that's I right. Like you it. didn't like it politically. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> you didn't like it, though, right? No, I... I had to restart it, and then I liked it because it it was something I started, and then like my brain went, oh, what this, and then like just stopped paying attention. Then I, then you were like, dude, like try it again. And I was like, all right, so I did it again, and I liked it. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, I I never caught back up with you on that. That's interesting. Okay, but yes, Phil, it is. It's Halloween tomorrow, and holy cow! Okay, it's exciting. It is exciting. This is my favorite holiday. Like, is what would you say is your favorite holiday of the whole year? I would go with this one, and I know the go-to would be Christmas because you like you get things, but you're also like 36 now, so it's not like you know yeah. waking up in the morning and be like, oh boy, it's like up ah, us. Uh, I got socks, and I really needed socks, so I'm not going to cry about it like when I was nine. Well, plus, you also, like, go broke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Halloween, it's like, unless you go broke buying, like, candy and, like, decoration. And, like, and like uh, you know, sex worker boss outfits. You can't call it pimp costumes anymore. You know? Okay. <laughs> At party sex worker city. boss. Sex worker boss. At party city stuff. 
<laughs> where like they or can't the British man with sideburns and glasses. Yeah, that's what I mean. You can't call it. Uh, you can't call the costume like uh, uh, Austin Powers. You have to call it Horny Brit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, because otherwise they'll get sued. Um, yeah, I love those costumes. Like we all know what it we is. We all know what it is. Like Halloween. Uh, like Michael Myers. You can't call it that. You have to call it uh, 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 the the guy whose name is often confused with the actor who played Horny Brit. <laughs> It's such a long, yeah, it's like a long fucking title on the fucking package. Guy who wants to murder his sister, even though in the original they weren't related. <laughs> yeah. A, a totally separate issue, but nothing makes me matter than what they did to the Halloween series the second they turned it into a fucking series. I'm going to say, man, the, with that series, it's like the first one. And the third one without Myers are the only ones that I give a shit about. Look, that's like the thing. I, I don't care for four, five, and on through. Two sucks. I like I, I did like the 2018 one that was just Halloween, and I liked it was okay. Halloween Kills, but I didn't like Ends. I thought I did, and then I was like, I don't like this plot. Actually, I don't like any of the uh, <clears throat> the Danny. What's his name? McBride. Yeah, I didn't care for those. I didn't care for those. I like them, but also, I mean, yeah, but they were like, that, "What's the point, Rob though?" Zombie. They were, they were like, "Oh, Rob Zombie one sucked." Those God, were that horrendous. Was so off when I rented the first one, oh. I, what was it like, two thousand seven or eight? I like rented it, and I was like, yeah. and like I'm at rent, like this is going to be good, and I'm just like sitting on the couch, like I hate this. No, those were bummers. Those were real fucking bummers. Because first off, I've never been. Look, no shade against Rob Zombie. I love White Zombie. I think that is a great rock and roll band, right? I'm fine with Rob Zombie. I love the fact that he's a huge horror nerd, but uh, I, I, I saw an interview recently where even he was like, the fucking Halloween movies I made aren't that great. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, I guess the studio jumped in and stuff, but like, it was one thing I've always not liked about what they did with the slasher movie sort of resurgence they tried in the first, uh, you know, in the, in the, 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 the 20, tens and stuff like that was they were like okay it's jason Voorhees again but this time he's like like the size of a fucking pro wrestler from the 80s where you're like why why does he need to be that like they were already pretty big guys michael myers is supposed to probably be about my size like six yeah. one 185 pounds just kind of like dad twink right yeah but he's got superhuman strength. You can shoot, you know, his psychiatrist can shoot him a bunch and he won't die. Like that in and of itself was fine. But they were like, no, 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 no. He needs to have fucking traps, bro. <laughs> like, like he needs to be ginormous. Why? I mean, he, he does live in the woods. So I would say like he does get his, uh, he gets his, his like steps in, I guess, you know? Yeah, but that's that's cardio. The way they showed him was like he was like fucking just at Gold's gym every day. Yeah. You know well, what I mean? Just rounding the machine. I'm sure he eats a lot of like dead squirrels and dead animals. Or he, you know, kills animals and eats those. Oh, I don't like to think of them as hurting animals. Do you think they do that? <laughs> Slasher movie villains? <laughs> Never. Just humans, because Never. we're garbage. Because we're garbage, and I hope we all die, and the squirrel kingdom arises. Um, but to get back to it, yeah, dude, I love Halloween. It's, uh, it's gosh, darn it. I'm <clears throat> sorry, Phil, I apologize, and to the audience, I apologize. We made a solemn vow we would not curse this month and say that wicked name, Heckoween. I love Heckoween. It's my number one holiday also. Yeah, it's like the song. This is Heckoween. This, this is Heckoween. Let me suck a teen. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I love Heckoween. Um, second favorite holiday, Easter Sunday. He is risen. And the Lord. It's just the Lord's back, baby. Lord is back. In pog form. Simpsons yeah. reference. Um, and I guess my third favorite holiday would be my mommy's birthday. Okay, well that's cool. I love my mommy's birthday, just because uh, she she was crucified 
and uh, came back. By woke media. She was crucified by woke media, by big woke. The big tech industry wokies got to her for, you know, some really genuinely not great tweets, to be fair. (laughs) Yeah, but, you know, she's from that generation. She's from that generation where you just go, really, a genocide happened? I'm not buying it. Okay, people. Okay. She watches (laughs) a lot of Bill Maher. Um, Least favorite holiday, Good Friday. Why is it, it? Is this a hack premise? Can I try it for a second? Do what? it, but you have to do it as a '90s sl- uh, hack comedian. Can we go '80s because that's really the uh, prototype? Okay. Okay. Hold on. <clears throat> what's the hold on, What's the deal? How about this? You heard about this? <laughs> good <laughs> Friday. They nailed him to a cross. That's not very good. Why don't they call it Not So Good Friday? In fact, I might even go as far to say Genuinely Terrible Friday. Boom! <laughs> okay, that's... Uh, okay, it's not that great. I'm going to take it back to the workshop. I'm going to work on it. Okay, we'll figure it out. We'll finger it out. Um, yeah. But, uh, it, uh, like, I guess all I'm saying is is Easter Sunday should be called Great Sunday. Super Sunday. Yeah. There and, you go. And Friday, right? When he when Look, they took his hands. This didn't happen in reality. But they took fake man, d- 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 God's son's hands, and put nails through them. And then they took his feet, and they were like, cross your feet. And he was like, no. You're just going to put one nail through both of them, you dick. And they were like, yeah. hey, bro, I am like, I just joined the Roman Legion. Okay. I, they, if I don't do this, I'm on the cross next to you, bro. Okay. Yeah, he's like, listen, I just wanted the, the little sword. The, the, yeah, I just wanted the sword. I wanted the little skirt and the helmet. I wanted I a didn't skirt, know that bro. First day as Roman guard, I would have to do this. I really didn't want to I do did. this. You're a pretty nice guy. You're a pre- Look, I don't know if I trust you and stuff like that because I'm a Roman, so I'm anti Semitic, but you seem chill as fuck. Having said that, I am going to wear this fucking skirt, bro, and you're not going to stop me. I'm so sorry to have to do this. Crank. <laughs> you know, and just yeah. like, oh, wow. Wow. Here comes the spear to the stomach. <laughs> that was Are at the they? end. That was just test and see if he was still kicking, you know? Yeah. <laughs> God, can you imagine just stabbing old Jesus right in the side? Just like, is he dead? No, I don't know. <laughs> That's fucked up. Yeah. Like an animal. Poke it with a stick. Well... Well, yeah, I was going to say we are animals, essentially, but uh, God did grant us dominion. Phil, yeah. today we're talking about what is probably, and I hate saying this, the great American horror film. Here's why I hate saying it, and then I'll explain why it's the great American horror film. I have said for years on this very P.O.D., again, that means podcast, Um, that... A Nightmare on Elm Street is the great American horror film. I, and I still think it is. But we're doing this movie for a reason. So I think this might actually be Text Chainsaw Massacre, might be the great American horror film for a couple of reasons. One, the name fucking rips. Yeah. It it's rips. So explanatory to where it's like. In Texas, there's a chainsaw and there's a massacre. I, I, I am, I am going to see this. And there's a the. There's a the. There's a the. It's not a Texas chainsaw massacre of many. And. Huh? Or and there's Texas no chainsaw. and Texas chainsaw massacre yeah. because that wouldn't make sense. No. Right? <laughs> there's not is Texas chainsaw massacre. That wouldn't make sense. Oh, wait a minute. Are we just doing the, uh, the, the, the prepositions? Okay, fine. Of Texas chainsaw massacre. Wouldn't make sense. Philip forgot the difference between an article and a preposition. And I almost went to college. <laughs> so yeah, I okay. know a little bit more. <laughs> 
Yeah, I've, I've, I've been on uh, working on the road for 15 and a half hours. So. <laughs> well, prepositions you can do over and under and through a log. That's how I always remember it. Whereas okay. uh, articles are just like a, uh, the, an, not and, of course. That's a conjunction. Okay. Okay. Oh, sorry. This is Grammar Podcast now. Yeah. <laughs> it's a click off now. Um, but yeah, it's not some Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's not like another Texas Chainsaw Massacre would be a great sequel name, by the way. Yeah. Another. How about this? It's a parody. Not another Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> not another gay Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, my God. Look, Philip is. One of his closest and bestest friends in the world is a gay guy. That's the big-headed dude you're looking at right now, okay? Um, and he's one of the lucky straights. I made him watch another gay... What's it called again? <laughs> another gay movie? Another Wait, gay no. movie. Yeah, yeah starring, that, yeah, okay, yeah. starring the man, Scott Thompson from Kids in the Hall. Like, when I was a kid on Comedy Central, before they, like, had enough money, they played two shows over and over. It was absolutely fabulous. <laughs> the British show that I never actually watched. And yeah. Kids in the Hall motherfucker scott thompson is my favorite i feel like you're probably a kevin mcdonald guy <laughs> uh bruce mccullough <laughs> yeah was he like the smaller kind of like he, yes bruce yes McCullough. that would be That's bruce mccullough like. you were you know we stand as short chubby king here and his name is bruce mccullough and his offspring is Philip Shadburn. Look, I got to tag you, bro. It's ha it's heck of Wayne. Tag body spray me. <clears throat> tag body spray me. Wow. Like, hey, we're trying to actually talk about some spooky stuff here, okay? Okay. I love you. I just don't need us to be, you know, be being too silly here. This is this is serious business. You are correct, and I apologize. Thank you, Ed McMahon over here. You are correct. Um, the slasher villain is another reason this might be the great American horror film. Now, Freddy Krueger rules. Nobody's questioning that, okay? Look, I've got the fucking Freddy Krueger glove right here, okay? It's not the original. It's actually completely plastic and the, the, the fake shitty paint. Fake paint. The, the, the fake paint I got on it? It's starting to chip off. Um, but Freddy Krueger rules, right? Chucky, right? He's running around, little ankle biter, just slashing the fudge at everybody. Oh, yeah. And, like, he can go easy with the Achilles tendon. You got the Jason mask? I got the Jason mask, Phil. You know why? Dude. Because he's one of the great fucking slashers. Okay? But when we're talking slashers, dude, we're talking all of them, of course. And then, of course, you got our kinky icon, who we love on this show more than anything, uh, Pinhead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and his friend, the Patriot. <laughs> yeah. Right? Bill Bill O'Reilly, of course, one of the yeah. great slashers. <laughs> and, Imagine him as a centibite. I could. Just some really six could. foot seven drunk Irishman from Long Island. <laughs> oh yeah. Some big old red nose. <laughs> yeah, dude. Definitely got Rosacea. Um oh, yeah. but the king of them all might be, even though I don't think he's got the confidence to truly wear the crown, heavy though it lay, is Leatherface, dude. Leatherface fucking rips, man. He's the best. He is. I I would say he's top tier because one, he's got a chainsaw, and that that's kind of hard to deflect. Yeah, genuinely, genuinely. Yeah. Well, I mean, unless you have a pistol, like at the beginning of this episode. <laughs> well, yes, yes. Unless you have a gun, but that's like for most slashers, it's like, well, if you have a gun, then it's like, oh yeah, well, this person has a gun and they failed. I'm like, well, they're idiots. It, they didn't shoot first and ask questions later. Yeah, that's a very good point. Donald Pleasance, one of, again, the great psychiatrist himself, <laughs> Dr. Loomis, who shoots his patient. <laughs> Look, I know we're here to talk Texas Chainsaw, okay? But a failure. 
What a fucking loser of a goddamn failure. psychiatrist. A failure. Yes, you're right. 100%. A total fucking failure. The fact that he was like, he went to everybody. He went to all of the fucking Haddonfield Police Department, all of the citizens he could find and shout like in their face an inch from their fucking mouth. He's, just, He's pure evil. Like, Sir, you smell like Johnny Walker Blue. Get away from me. You smell like no, Johnny Walker Red. All right, come on. He's on a okay. psychiatrist salary in the 70s yeah, he's not, yeah, he's he's not, he works at a state hospital okay yeah oh, okay never mind <laughs> yeah it's in some private institution shit over here right yeah <laughs> you know, he's drinking fucking jim beam let's be real oh <laughs> yeah yeah no nah, he's doing the evan williams <laughs> it's back in the day when the cops would pull you over and they'd be like whoa you are shit-faced buddy I hope you get home safe. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? <laughs> I miss those days that I never lived in. <laughs> I know. They just salute you as you drive off. You get them, tiger. Right now, let's go beat up some black people, cops. Right? Still the case. Yeah. Um, you want to talk about something scary? Let's talk about policing in this country. Ladies and gentlemen, right? Just launch into that. <laughs> um, but we're trying to not be depressing, but fun. Okay? So let's move back to it. Um, the look of the movie so, I know we're going to get into this in the factoid segment, but this was low fucking budget. Oh, yeah. Even for 1974, what is it, like 50 grand? 40 grand? 60. 60 grand? Okay. That is still not much. Okay? Oh, no. That is one one thousandth of what I make a year on Patreon. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Do you think they bought it? I hope so. Okay. So we're just, I'm going to edit out this part where clearly we don't make that much. And we're just going to, um, in fact, um, uh, the way we'll just, when we cut back, I'll, uh, you and I are in the middle of talking about, um, how much, uh, you know, uh, like the new watches we got. Okay. All right. So on three, we're going to cut out this part, come back. We're talking about our golden watches, right? It's so gold, the new watch I got, and I almost feel like it's a little gaudy. Do you know what I mean? Well, unlike mine, which is gold and dime. Fuck. You, you, you know me, I, I, I always go a little bit ahead. You always go a little bit ahead, which makes me feel a little bit behind, you know, even though I've got a big behind. I mean, they just saw it in the opening of this, but it makes me feel like yeah. I've got like a little Tim Curry butt. <laughs> You know, I, I I wish I had at least that. I but, was gonna be the fucking monster. <laughs> you do have no ass, but you have a fucking golden and diamond watch. My God, we make so much money from Patreon. It is starting to be like I'm worried by how much fucking money we're making. I'm thinking of turning myself gold. Are you? Yeah. Okay. How are you gonna do it? Um, I'm gonna find a way to um to uh, shoot gold flakes into my blood and then that will uh mix with the blood oh just drink a bunch I, of gold schlager i could do that too yeah <laughs> just chug gallons of gold schlager just like uh, tommy lee does apparently <laughs> okay yeah I'd, I'd love to be like tommy lee who doesn't his dick is almost as big as uh your dad's <laughs> yeah <laughs> He, he he can push buttons with it and turn on the light switch. He had dirt buttons. Ladies and gentlemen, look, 60 grand is not a lot for a fucking budget, even by 1974, even 73 standards. Um, but the look of it, they made it work, dude. It's raw. It's weird. The editing is everything about it is so evocative and upsetting. Like they really generate a mood that's almost like the Mondo Italian Italian horror films. Uh, so the Mondo subgenre of Italian films from the mid to late seventies, early eighties, even um, is sort of where you get like, uh, for example, uh, Cannibal Holocaust, where it's not a mockumentary, but it is a fake documentary that makes you know it. it, it you know, it, it gives you the vibe that you're watching a real documentary. Uh, we all know this now is called found footage, right? It's that kind of vibe almost, but they didn't go just far enough that it 
actually has like somebody being like, hey, you know, I'm Sally Hardesty and we're go, you know, we're fucking driving across Texas talking direct to camera. That would have ruined it. But it's close enough. Do you know what I mean by that? Like the shots are like almost amateurish at times, but perfect for the vibe they're trying to get. It's very earthy, a very earthy uh, shot of, uh, you know, film. Yeah. Are you there? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. It's very earthy. It's got, uh, do you want to say it? A graininess to it. Do I want to say it? I, I feel like I want, you know, I want to hear you say it. Well, it's got a graininess to it. It's, it's, a, of course, it's that early 70s, like camera style. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but then also, like, there's like the way the shots are has a disturbing aspect to it. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I mean, what Toby Hooper, the director of the film, what he wanted really much for this movie was for it to have a uh, the 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 look of Vietnam War footage that you know Vietnam, famously the first film uh, that well, excuse me, the first uh, war where people saw a lot of footage of it. In fact, it's pretty much the you know, footage coming home from Viet the Vietnam War that is credited with turning public the public tide against the war, right? People were like, yeah. whoa, that's a lot of body bags in a row. Whoa, that's a village that just got fucking carpet bombed. And it's very effective, obviously. Shaky camera stuff. A lot of it is just what we call in the industry off sticks. There's no tripod. It's just you're holding the camera and you're pushing in on, you know, some big scary thing. Uh, yeah, I love the look of this movie. And again, just another reason why this might be the great American horror film is it just it's perfect in that regard. But Phil, let's just get into it, man. Look, we're talking around the issue. We're beating around the bushy. I got to ask, what the hell's the plot? All right, well, I'm, I'm going to do it since it's in Texas. So I'll do a Texas accent. Thank you, sir. Some hippy-dippy greenhorns take a trip to see one of their old stomping grounds and terror awaits. Um, you ran through that a little fast. Line reading? Right, right. Dot, now. dot, dot, and terror awaits. Should I do it over? Take it again. Take two. Some hippy dippy greenhorns take a trip to see one of their old stomping grounds. Terror awaits. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Um. Okay, so Phil, we got to run through this. So how's about a quick cast rundown? All right, we have Marilyn Burns as the main chick, Sally Hardesty. She's the scream queen. Yes, she is. She's, again, look, a lot of people are going to point to, as always, Halloween, the 1978 horror movie classic by uh, our man, our hero, John Carpenter, as the first true slasher film. Plenty of great stuff to go for that. I get it. I think it's this one. I do think it's this one. And if it is this one, if our case is made appropriately, and by the end of this episode, I truly hope it is, then all I can say is Marilyn Burns might be the true first Scream Queen. Um, yeah. You tell us. If you disagree, comment below. Let us know. And don't right. fucking say Psycho, okay? Psycho's amazing, but I don't yeah. know if that truly counts as a slasher. Yeah, that's more of like a psychological thriller. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Redditors, who just want to yeah. correct me and Phil. Phil, sorry, go on with the cast. All right, we have Alan Denzinger as Jerry. He was also in a uh, in Toby Hooper's first movie, Eggshells. Did 1969. you... 1969. Excuse me. What were the oh. last two numbers you just said? 
69. I thought you did. Phil, have you seen eggshells? Uh, no, I have not. So a couple years ago, you and I were doing podcast only, no video form to it, uh, slasher movie podcast now. And if you want to find all those old episodes, they're fantastic. You just got to scroll down a ways to about 2020, 2021. Um, we did a real good deep dive on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I was getting super into Toby Hooper at the time because I had just seen Funhouse, another Toby Hooper classic. Dude, we got to do that eventually, at least on the Patreon. At Eating Alive. Eating Alive. Hey, eating ain't cheating. No. It's not. It's not cheating. Phil, you got to talk no. to you. You got you to tell it to the missus. You got to be like, hey, both of us can go eat stuff. It's not cheating. Yeah. Like, you can eat a sandwich and it's not cheating on your beloved. No. You're not cheating on the love of your life if you have a fucking ham sammy or a, a pussy pie. Pussy pie. <laughs> but I got super into Toby Hooper's uh, uh, filmography, and I watched um, Eggshells, which is student film as fuck, and it is, uh, it's bas- what would you say, you know, it's it's basically, again, 1969. It's a bunch of, like, Texan, Austin, you know, University of Texas hippies who go into a basement of a house where evil awaits. Mm-hmm. It is not good. It is so fucking abstract. Think of this, Phil. The type of thing where they they superimpose over people's faces like lava lamp shit. Like it's bad. It's very uh, sexy. It's one of those like <laughs> yeah. like weird like hippie like and it shows their faces is with like the lava lamps and they like melt kind of bullshit in a black room with white yeah. curtains. It's yeah, that, that kind of shit. for That's sure. Right. Hundred percent, like the very first music videos, level bad. Yeah, for sure. Okay, I see what you mean because I love Black Sabbath, but I saw like the Iron Man a video from like like the sixties, and I was like, ugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That but, them think, on a stage with, like lava lamps. Think that, but like eighty five minutes of that. That's pretty much what eggshells is. Ew, eighty five minutes, yeah, give or take ish. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, ninety. You know, maybe less. Go on with the cast. All right, well, we have Paul A. Partain as Franklin Hardesty. Uh, for those of you who aren't necessarily familiar, but you've seen it, I'm trying to remember who that is, that's the that's uh, Sally's brother. Sally, please, the one in the wheelchair. Yeah. And the problem is, he is an unlikable character, and uh, I know this is a factoid of yours, but I do want to just say this real quick. Apparently, the actor... Just as fucking unlikable. Yeah. <laughs> like on well, set. Like, also, the thing with like Franklin, it's like he's the only guy, like he's the only person in that group that's like, hey guys, something's not right. And they're like, oh, shut up, you crippled bitch. And they just go through <laughs> like, no, I'm serious. This, this is not good. Very and, 70s way to go about it, for sure. For as he's eating sure. sausage. <laughs> yeah. Or my, fa- my favorite thing he ever does is, like, they keep abandoning him, by the way. They're just like, oh, look, he doesn't have legs. We broke down. We need to go up to that nice house over there. I'm sure there's no problems. And they yeah. just keep leaving him unattended. Not to say people in wheelchairs can't fend for themselves, but when they're stuck in a house... That's abandoned and run down or in the middle of like a field. It's probably not. (laughs) Or when they leave him like on the property, it's like, I don't think the treads of his tires are going to get him very far. Especially wheelchairs back then. Like nowadays, I know you could like, look, he could, Franklin could have joined a murder ball league, but like back then. I was going to say like a fucking chair now is like, they have like nice treads and shit and you can get like big ass tires and go mud. Yeah, but back then, nah, you were fucked. Yeah, give him some yeah. off-roading tires. They'd be fucking oh, jumping yeah. that shit over fucking to, to take it through a BMX trail. But oh, yeah. but uh, uh, one of my favorite things he does, I mean, come on, it's iconic, is when he's just like left alone and he's just like, oh, they just left poor little old me here again. <gasps> <gasps> It's just. They just let poor little old Frank. Sally, please. Sally, please. <laughs> Sally, please. Sally, oh my God, I'm being chainsawed. It's amazing. Go on. Edwin Neal as the hitchhiker. Yeah, sure. Sure. Brother of Ed O'Neill. 
Uh, the, yeah, the brother of Ed O'Neill. The hitchhiker is uh, otherwise known as Nubbins, and he's a brother of the Sawyer family who we're about to meet, uh, I imagine, as the cast list continues. But uh, yes. he has one of the great, just bizarro, what the fuck is happening characters in cinema. So yeah, there's like, here's some bones and like here's a piece of film and some like gunpowder. Yeah, and he just starts a fire and then he slashes that uh, he slashes with Franklin, right? He slashes Franklin's hand. He stabs Franklin in the legs, which he could not feel, but still. <laughs> but hey, well, just because you can't use your legs doesn't mean you can't feel them. Yeah. And Phil, even if you couldn't feel something and somebody stabbed your leg, you'd still be like, hey, that I know I don't feel it, but that is my leg. Sally, please. It's still going to bleed. It's going to bleed. We all bleed blue, okay? We all bleed blue. Yep. <clears throat> Go on, sister. All right, we have Jim Seedow as uh, Drayton Sawyer, the old man who's like, oh, y'all coming here for some chili and ginger ale. My favorite Barbecue. my favorite thing to eat on a 105-degree day in Texas is spicy Red Rock ginger ale that does not yeah. in any way quench your fucking thirst. Molten hot. <laughs> Molten hot with just fresh-made, probably overcooked, stringy, shitty ribs. <laughs> yeah. Like, did you buy these at Kroger and just reheat them in the oven? <laughs> exactly. But go off, Queen. Okay, well. We get to Gunnar Hansen, who plays Leatherface. The man himself. Man of the hour. Yep. We have John Duggan as the grandfather. And last but not least, John Larroquette as the narrator. You might remember him from Nightport and Stripes. And the narrator for Life Force, another Toby Hooper movie I didn't really like. It was kind of boring. Oh, really? I never saw it. It's about like energy vampires they don't suck your blood they're just like they I'm suck your death you, and you're just like, oh, and like turn they just to touch you yeah, okay that's great they're um, from like outer space i was like this is too thought out who cares now john larroquette uh did the voiceover for this film and we're gonna play it real quick but uh, before i do that i want to tell you what he did the voiceover for he didn't do it for money he was a college student at the time young struggling actor he did one of the great narration intros for the price of one joint just one just Come one on, just man. one fucking jo- he didn't know. i'm sure he thought there's some student film that's going to go nowhere <laughs> yeah i don't think he had any idea how fucking classic this film was going to be but here's the intro it's only 45 seconds the film which you are about to see is an account of the tragedy which befell a group of five youths, in particular, Sally Hardesty and her invalid brother, Franklin. It is all the more tragic in that they were young. But had they lived very, very long lives, they could not have expected, nor would they have wished to see as much of the mad and macabre as they were to see that day. For them, an idyllic summer afternoon drive became a nightmare. The events of that day were to lead to the discovery of one of the most bizarre crimes in the annals of American history, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Motherfucker. Motherfucker, dude. (laughs) Holy shit. One of the great narrations ever. And John Lyric had did it for one night of being probably mildly buzz off of 1970s shit I read. I was going to say, <laughs> he probably got a headache and was like, oh, I'm so high. And it's like, nah. Nah, brother, you ain't as high as we get now, dude. He's, he's like, wait a minute. This is just stems and seeds. <laughs> yeah, awesome. <laughs> it's the 70s. That's all they knew. Yeah. Um, we got to go smoke grass. Exactly. But look, Phil... Texas is a crazy concern state. Uh, it's hot. It's big. It's the opposite of my dick. Um, but uh, the director of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is on the Mount Rushmore of horror filmmakers. He's right in the fucking middle, to be perfectly honest. And it's mostly just for this film. Like, look, again, Funhouse is great. Eating Alive is pretty goddamn good. Uh, you know, that's about it. But really, it's, he's on Mount Rushmore because of this movie, okay? Because it's the fucking balls. But did you know, 
about uh, Toby Hooper's own personal run-in with pure evil? No. Was it Michael Myers? I don't understand. He's pure evil. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, he actually like had an actual run-in with a psychopath. And uh, Phil, if you just plop on down on Papa Mike's knee, I think I'm about to tell you a tale that's actually genuinely true and quite upsetting. Okay, Papa. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, baby. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, let me pull up the... Wait, son of a bitch. I pulled up the wrong thing. Hold on. Oh, I'm such a fucking pooper. Toby pooper. <laughs> right, here we go. <clears throat> There's the horror ambience. On July 31st, 1966, a young Marine named Charles went for a drive. He was running errands like any other day. But what set this day apart was he had a plan that was a little more unusual than normal. First, he stopped by the 7-Eleven convenience store and bought a pair of binoculars and a can of Spam. Nectar of the gods, as the Texans know it. And then he picked up his wife, Kathy, who had finished a shift as a telephone operator. After taking her home, he swung by a local cafeteria in Austin to have a nice late lunch with his mama. Aww. Don't we love that? We love our mamas. Uh, and then he went home, and he sat down, and he wrote his suicide note. Here's what it said. I do not quite understand what it is that compels me to type this letter. Perhaps it is to leave some vague reason for the actions I have recently performed. I do not really understand myself these days. I'm supposed to be an average, reasonable, and intelligent young man. However, lately, I cannot recall when it started. I have been a victim of many unusual and irrational thoughts. These thoughts constantly recur, and it requires a tremendous mental effort to concentrate on useful and progressive tasks. Just after midnight, he drove to his mother's home, stabbed her in the heart. After covering her with bed sheets, he drove back home and murdered his wife, Kathy. After covering uh, her with bed sheets, he drove back home and murdered his wife. I already said that. He didn't murder two wives. He had one. Let me go on. Later that morning on August 1st, 1966, he drove to the University of Texas, uh, the Austin campus, and told a security guard that he was a research assistant there to uh, deliver equipment. He climbed the clock tower, and over the course of about an hour and a half, he shot dozens of people, killing 14 and injuring a further 31, before being shot dead by a cop by the name of Houston McCoy. It's the most Texan name ever. Scab, Philip. Some cops apparently aren't bastards. Take a note, Uvalde. Anyways... The reason I bring up this terrifying mass shooting from almost 60 fucking years ago is Toby Hooper was a student at the university, and he was there that day. And as he was exiting into the main courtyard, he saw people get shot to death right in front of his very eyes. He saw a cop tell him to get the fuck back inside, hid in the hallway until everything was pretty much done. That's scary shit. That'll fuck your head up, man. Yeah. I clearly fucked up his. Especially, like, you have a guy in, like, a clock tower. You don't know if you're next and where the fucking shot's going to go. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, look, to be in any situation like that, it's terrifying. Yeah. Um, but that's, you know, that's one of the classic... Really bad things. Really bad things. Uh, really bad events in uh, American history is uh, the 1966 of uh, the University of Texas at Austin shooting, you know. So let's get into it. Let's discuss. Phil, what's your history with this movie? Um, I never really saw the whole thing until like later on in like the 2000s. Uh, I would always see like clips or little bits of it. Right. I 
the movie that came on the most on TV for me was Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. <laughs> hey, you know, I know it's stupid, but you know, it's 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 all it's what I had. Until I was like, oh, there's this one. You know, I watched that movie for the first time. Uh, I think before this, before I actually saw the original, I think I saw the 1986 uh, sequel directed again by Toby Hooper, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. I saw that first. I think my parents rented it from Blockbuster. That's how fucking old I am. Uh, maybe Phil, maybe even Hollywood video. And been Hollywood. It might have been a, it might have been there uh, after eating at Planet Hollywood. <laughs> oh, fancy. Yeah. Y'all was rich. We had money, man. What can I say? I, I got to eat chicken fingers by a T eight hundred. Yeah, and we ate it inside of a like a like a like a fake, you know, oh. f- fucking car booth. <laughs> yeah, like 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 a fucking Chevy Bel Air. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. With like the fins on the back and everything. Um yeah. So I saw the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 first and genuinely was like, this sucks. So I guess I don't have to see the first one. <laughs> 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 and I didn't until I was 15 or 16. So only a couple of years later, I, I uh, we, my parents sprung for the cable package where you could get IFC. Do you remember that channel? Yeah. The independent film channel. It played like, well, just yeah. like a bunch of indie movies, a bunch of John Waters, a bunch of... We had that on Hedwig our, and the Angry Inch. On our package, <laughs> yeah. Because I remember, I think Rushmore would come on on that. That would make sense. That would make sense. Yeah, yeah probably did. I love that movie. and that, I think that was where I would see Rushmore a lot and Stars. Yo, see, I thought I thought Rushmore would have been more of the Cinemax affair. The Cinemax? Yeah, Cinemax. You know, it wasn't just fucking softcore porn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it w- well, I mean, I only watched it after 12. Oh, uh, well, Phil, no, what the fuck? Cinemax was like, man, I miss Cinemax. Cinemax was like, it was like the... The uh, the farm system for HBO, right? It was like, okay, if yeah. this does good enough on Cinemax, you're probably going to wind up seeing it on HBO, which is now just yeah. called Max, the lamest they, fucking rebranding. Yeah, they would play a lot of uh, RoboCop 2 and 3. See what I mean? See what I mean? That Never kind won of shit. that much. That's what I mean. So, like, I didn't see... Uh, we had IFC. And they had like a whole weekend of just playing the original Texas Chainsaw. And I was like, all right, fuck it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Even though the sequel, huh, that was rough. I still don't like the sequel. I think it's shitty. <laughs> because I mean, it, he, he tries to make it a horror dude. comedy, dude. Why? It's yeah. the Texas Chainsaw I Massacre. I, I don't understand it. Dog because... wheel hunt. Like, I don't give a fuck about that. St- or the fight at the end on top of a gigantic fake like a like putt putt mat- mountain yeah the Matterhorn yeah what is the point in that shit dude I I I, I don't know <laughs> what was going on with Toby Hooper at the time but he's like hey you know what I'm gonna make it funny but like not funny okay my biggest problem with horror comedies isn't the idea of mixing horror with comedy fucking look at Evil Dead two you can do it yeah. my problem is. When it's not funny enough to be a comedy and not scary enough to be a horror movie, then I'm just watching some bland bullshit. You know, I think a lot of people are going to get mad at us for this, or at least me for having said this, but I know you agree with me. A great example of it's kind of funny, but not that much. It's kind of, I guess, sometimes a little scary, but not really almost ever. Uh, Tucker and Dale versus Evil. I hate that movie. That movie can fuck off. That movie can fuck off. That movie can fuck off. Sorry. Sorry. There is oh, genuine. Like, Go on. Even The Cabin in the Woods, a horror comedy. I love that movie, but I, I really don't laugh at this. Well, there's a few things that I like laugh at, but it's not like. Right. Yeah. Right. No, no, no. Same, same. Um. 
Yeah, so that's always been my problem with Texas Chainsaw 2. But when I saw the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1, I was like 16. It was like a Sunday morning even. And I was just sitting in my bedroom, just moody little fucking punk rock, little closet, little queer. And I'm just yeah. sitting there. I hate the world. Every, nobody gets me. Fuck everything. And then I yeah. see the Texas Chainsaw Massacre from start to finish. And I was like, this is the greatest fucking thing I've ever seen, dude. I was obsessed. I still am changed my fucking world i love this movie i remember my brother had the atari game of the texas chainsaw massacre what is I that i got his atari he's like eh, here what okay but what what's the uh, gameplay like what, what are you doing in it okay so you're running from no way you are Leatherface, but you also you're just like a you're like a rectangle with like a rectangle arm and then like a smaller rectangle as your like chainsaw and you're just like it's like Pac Man. Okay, but what do you like every fucking game was like Pac Man? Okay, that's great, Phil, but what are you doing with your little chainsaw rectangle arm? You just Are you chase, chasing teenagers? Like yeah, like square <laughs> rectangular like what's supposed to be people and like collecting like power-ups okay so it's just a money grab it's just like some poorly designed shitty video game yeah it's like most like atari games and like nes 8-bit games where it's like well we'll make a movie game and it's like this has nothing to do with it sure the best one um like the worst one really when i was a kid that i played was um uh, the Mario Brothers movie video game, <laughs> where you played uh, Bob Hoskins and he's drunk and he's on and he's in his trailer, and yeah, he, and he's trying to get the toilet to flush. Yeah, I can't flush the bloody toilet. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just like, oh, that's a really block dump. I think I might be sick, like. <laughs> I think it might. Yeah, I, I, I need to get the knife out and cut it so it goes in more better. <laughs> okay. Anyways, um, no, but I think the worst video game adaptation I ever played as a kid was, and I'm not a big video game guy, I got to admit, uh, would have been True Lies. <laughs> like, I was so That's, excited for that fucking video yeah. game. <gasps> no. Holy no. shit, I just remembered. Did you ever play the Cliffhanger video game? Uh, actually, a couple weeks ago, because my friend that comes over to like do like classic games, like the whole theme that night was to do games that are based off a of movie. So we started with like Sega, and it was, uh, and I was like, oh, Cliffhanger. And I was like, I remember how much I hated this. And I, I it's got the to worst. like it's the, the second worst. level where you have to climb the mountain and there's like snipers shooting at you, but you can't, the controlling is so bad. There's like not much you can do, but like try to get away from them, but you're so goddamn slow and their bullets are faster than you. So you're like, all right, okay, fuck this. This is stupid. It's the worst. It's the worst. Yeah. Oh, I hated that game. So goddamn bad. Um, Actually, true lies was kind of fun. Phil, we don't have time. Let's do factoids yeah. and just give me the top five factoids. Actually, let me give you a little song. Let's see. Where's the factoids? Phil, where's the factoids song? I don't know. I don't do your computer. You don't do my computer? Not <laughs> anymore. <laughs> Since I made you stop. Factoids. All right, Phil, give us some fucking factoids and only the good ones. I don't want to hear I, about what Sally Hardesty ate for breakfast. Okay, Unless well, it was leather, long pig. Hmm, go on. Okay, well, since Leatherface had no actual dialogue, um, uh, and he was hidden under a mask, so you couldn't see like facial expressions or anything like that, um, Gunnar Hansen had to visit a friend of his who owned a hog farm in Texas to learn like the squills and stuff, like <laughs> kind of stuff. And then to learn the, since he was mentally ill, this character is mentally ill. He had to visit a mental hospital in Austin to learn the mannerisms of the mentally ill, like the rocking back and forth, the right. jitter, 
Yeah. The anxious sort of, yeah. Real quick, is he mentally ill or is he um, uh, like mentally disabled? Because like somebody with schizophrenia, it doesn't mean like they're the same thing as uh, I, somebody well, on the spectrum. Michael, this was the 70s. <laughs> it's you, a good, you, were, you were just called retarded. That's a, that's a very good point. They actually called hospitals back then the home for the retarded. It was <laughs> really not great. Yeah, that's a good point. Oh, okay, no, never mind. I no, never that. mind. Never mind. Good point. Okay, you're right. It was the 70s. <laughs> okay. Yeah, what do you expect? So he would go to a mental asylum and just like be like, you know, some actor, just some actor. I mean, Gunnar Hansen really didn't have a career. I think he was only in like three things. <laughs> what, an ex of uh, Chainsaw Hookers or whatever? He was in a few things. Um, uh, uh, Gunnar Hansen, by the way, greatest fucking name ever, maybe. Like the oh, most yeah, manly. Hansen. That is Giga Chad name, dude. Oh, yeah. That is Giga Chad name. He, uh, his first film was The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Played Leatherface, obviously. Then he was in something called The Demon Lover as Professor Peckinpah. It doesn't even have a fucking link on Wikipedia. That's is that supposed to be a reference to Sam Peckinpah? Yeah, obviously. Yeah, it's yeah, 1977. Of course it's yeah. a Peckinpah reference. Um, and then nothing until 1988. He was in Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers, which is, I mean, a great name. I think yeah. if you just put Chainsaw in any name for a movie, <clears throat> like, I mean, Hollywood chainsaw hookers i'm sure is a piece of shit that i don't even care to say but the name is fucking great dude yeah like you know imagine like the godfather but in st same plot nothing is different not even a chainsaw but if you just call it the the chainsaw godfather it's immediately better Mean yes. Chainsaw Girls, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, he didn't do much, uh, uh, and then he died, sadly, R.I.P. God damn, almost, almost eight years ago to the day, November 7th, uh, 2015. Yeah, died in Northeast Harbor, Maine. R.I.P., man, Gunnar Hansen. That was a real motherfucker right there, dude. But yes, uh, anyways, go on. All right, so the dinner scene had to be shot in a single day because uh, John Duggan, the actor who played Grandpa, had to wear like a shit ton of like fucking prosthetics and makeup. And <laughs> yeah, stuff. he did. Yeah, he did. And not to mention the Texas heat uh, and inside of that shitty house that they also were like the dinner scene had like rot, like just meat, like raw meat everywhere. And it was starting to fucking stank. Stank? Yeah. Did you say stank? I said stank. Oh, fair enough, sister. Get it. God damn. Okay. And Hell. He was, and he was like, I'm not fucking doing this for two days. I'm going to vomit. <laughs> and I, I'm very hot and I could die. So let's get this done so I can not do this anymore. So you paid you John Larrakat one joint and you didn't give me shit enough. <laughs> Wait, so you're saying the guy who played Grandpa was like, hey, I'm not doing this any longer. We have to film all of my scenes in one day. Yeah. I get it. I get it, man. That's a dude. Fucking actors on an indie set, especially when you're as caked in makeup as Gam Gam is in that. Holy shit. I don't blame them. Oh, I mean, fuck yeah. Like, um, like when we were doing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre scene uh, for the video that mask I have is so tight and like, it's a great mask, but it's also like tight as shit where I'm like, I can't have this on for like over like three minutes or I'm going to. No. Yeah. Yeah. You were sweating like a beast, dude. It was just like, yeah. okay, look when, when we're not literally fucking shooting this, the shot, you don't wear the mask. <laughs> like I remember I having to tell you that I was constantly ripping it off. Like I was like a Scooby Doo person. Like here's the bad guy. <laughs> yeah, it's me, hey. Philip. My back hurts and I'm sweaty. Yeah, my back hurts and I'm <laughs> stiff and sweaty. <laughs> All right, what's the next factoid? Let's get through it. All right. Well, the first title of the film was going to be called Head Cheese. Uh, then the producers were like, "Yeah, I don't know about that." Like. What is head cheese? And he's like, oh, well, head cheese is blah, 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 blah. And it's like, oh, it's just like 
Yeah, we're not doing that. He's like, yeah, that sounds gross. Let's call it Dick Chase. <laughs> yeah, we'll call it, Dick, we'll call it Schmeg. <laughs> we'll call it Schmegma. <laughs> and so then it became Leatherface, and the producers were like, yeah, but like that's not really like going to catch the audience. So the final title came about a week before shooting, and it was the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like we talked about earlier, it it works. It says it's what it is. It do. says what it is. Like, yeah. like if you go to see a movie, like, well, first off, if you see a poster or a flyer in 1974 or whatever in some fair Texas town that says head cheese playing at the local cinema, you go, what the fuck is head cheese? That, that gross fucking brain meat I don't eat? Like, who the fuck even knows what head cheese is outside of Texas? The fuck? We didn't grow up in Georgia eating it. I don't, at least I don't no, remember no, no. eating I it. Mean, I'm, I mean, I was raised by fucking rednecks, and I'm like, I've never ate anything that strange. No, exactly. Me neither. Me neither. Um, of course, I was raised I by... The strangest thing I've ate would be like wild game. Like, I've had rabbit. Yeah, but fucking like French kings eat fucking yeah, rabbit. Say, like, it's not that fucking like, weird. If if you go uh, across the ocean over there, that's like there. Oh, we have rabbit and boiled goose. Yeah, exa- exactly, exactly. Um, yeah. Head cheese doesn't say what the movie's about. Leatherface, great name for a movie, but that sounds more like like the name for something like Driving Miss Daisy. Like you know what I mean? Just yeah. like some leather faced old woman. Like Leatherface yeah. doesn't. <laughs> to the grocery store. That's what I mean. Like, it doesn't inherently say this is about a dude who chopped off somebody's fucking face, dried it out, stitched it back together, and wears it. That doesn't express that. Yeah. So, like, it, like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that title, very direct, says exactly what the fuck is going on, and you don't have any... Qu- I mean, you've got questions. That's the great thing about it. You're like, Texas Chainsaw, man. What the fuck? Some psycho out here, out in these streets chainsawing people to death? Yeah. You're right. Yes, that's exactly... Well, to be honest, it only happens to one person, really. But, like, you know, it's it's scary, spooky, positively ooky. It's a great title. They, 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 they To be honest, one of the rare examples of, like, the producer and the executives and shit making a good call. Yeah. Okay, what's the next factoid? Well, End uh, on a banger. End on a banger, bitch. What do you got? We're going to go back to Franklin because we didn't... Uh, so the cast, like we talked about a little earlier, just like Franklin because... Uh, so the guy who played Franklin, which was Paul A. Partain, uh, didn't realize that he did need to stay in character all the time. He was like a theater guy, so he thought he had to be like, I have to do this. Oh, he went Daniel Day-Lewis day style? Yeah, so he read the part and he realized, like, that nobody wanted the character to be there. Like we talked about, like, earlier. It's like, ah, he's going to slow us down. So it hit him to act whiny all the time. Marilyn Burns actually would stop speaking to him between takes. Oh, no. And later said it was one of the only characters in the whole film that he enjoyed killing off. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, funny. I almost feel bad for the guy who played Franklin. He was trying to, like, was he from, like, New York or something? Like, was he, like, one of those, um, you know, like, 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 from the, the you know, what the fuck is that called? The, um, you know, the very specific, like, theater uh, thing where it's, like, you have to stay in character the entire, like, the Meisner technique or whatever. Was okay. it one of those kind of guys? Oh, I feel so bad for him. The fucking dummy. Yeah, you know? like... I think he's up there with Shelley from Friday the 13th Part 3 as, like, annoying. Insufferable. But Shelley, but Shelley had redeeming qualities at the same time. Though. Did he? he? He Well, he was a he was kind of a nice guy. Just be like, I'm going to be the prankster and make friends and possibly get laid. And it's like, no. And that's a good point. Whereas, uh, whereas Franklin is just a whiny piece of fucking shit. <laughs> The yeah. entire time. That's a good point. Oh, I feel bad for him. Um, yeah, but then again, he, he's crippled in the 70s. You can't blame him. You can't blame him. He's had a hard life. Yeah. All right, so look, that's it for factoids. Phil, what are we giving the original 1974 proto-slasher movie classic, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre? 
I'm going to give it a 100%. 100 per- out of 1,000? So, wow. So, that's ah, like, so you don't even like this movie. I gotcha. I'm kidding. So, you give it 100% out of 100. That's an A++++, plus, yeah. plus, 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 dude. Yes. I'm getting my baby gun for Christmas now. Oh, man. Well, I mean, you know, don't shoot your eye out, kid. But, uh, okay, you give it 100% because it sounds like you really like it. I do. I'm going to give it... Look, hey, man. I know we live in an era where it's like people on the left like us are supposed to be like America's the worst, but I'm an American boy deep down. God damn it. I'm giving it 110% like I do any goddamn thing, okay? Oh, yeah, brother. Which I do think means I like this movie more than you and you don't like it as much as me and you're a fucking poser, just like always, and I'm sorry to have to say that because I have nothing but love for you. (laughs) It's Heckoween, and I'll give you that. (laughs) That's my trick. And uh, once we uh, stop uh, recording, I'm going to whip out my trait, okay, which is my butt. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Which is my big farty butt, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, guys and ghouls, right? Ladles and jelly spoons. Join us next time right here on uh, Movie Podcast Now, where we will be doing a deep dive into the works of John Carpenter guy we brought up several times the fucking man we're gonna be getting into that and this week on movie podcast now plus we'll be listening to um we're gonna be doing the big halloween special so fucking join us over there uh at uh, patreon.com forward slash pmtm link is in the description and uh yeah just look be safe out there this heck of wayne okay they're the libs are putting fentanyl in all of the candied treats. So go get it. So go get it and fucking save me some, motherfuckers. Yeah. All right? Um, and uh, Phil, is there anything you want to say? Have a happy heck of Bye. Bye. <laughs>